Welcome to the audio portion of Non-Electrical to Electrical Issue Battery Booster Pack Repair by Wesley Gardner. So I've had this booster pack sitting around my shop. I use it all the time and even use the air compressor on it quite often too. I have a feeling they are not meant for such abuse and it finally gave out. So after almost a year of it not working, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to start my adventure into repairing it. I had a ton of ideas that I was wanting to do with this project, but I felt I would try to find something practical and something maybe no one else would do. Since video game systems and anything related to them has been done before by me over the years, I wanted to step away from that and other things that I usually repair because that would be simple, way too simple and would feel like I was cheating. This brought me to the booster pack with compressor on it. Since it was electronic and also mechanical, and would be fairly straightforward. This is what I thought. I decided to open up the compressor part, only six small screws, but the wires leading into the main compartment were short. So I had to open up the rest to see if I could get a bit more play from the cables to the compressor unit. Another 10 to 14 screws there. Finding the slack I needed, I began to investigate the pump. It's a nice setup. It was built better than I thought it would be. The pump was fairly dirty, so I decided I would clean up the parts, re-grease the piston and housing to see if it would work on further investigation though. I noticed the ring around the piston was worn and damaged and it set inside the top of the piston ring, so I had to come up with a solution. At first I decided I would use an o-ring at the top of the tube. Seemed like there would have been enough clearance. Well, there wasn't, I overloaded the pump and blew the fuse since there was not enough clearance as I hoped there would have been. And this is where the fuse came into play. But first, back to the piston on the pump. How did I resolve this? Well, I took a o-ring, smaller one, that I could stretch around the piston and then take my Dremel, very not so good battery one. I slowly sanded it around the o-ring until it would fit into the tube with just enough pressure. Then I took some white grease and greased it up good this time. Anything below the ring got a lot of grease. Hopefully this will help. I thought to myself as I know it does get fairly hot even though it's just a small piston. After getting it all back together, after I oiled all moving parts with a drop of all-purpose oil, just to make sure it's all good and works out any dirt that might be in any parts, I went to turn it on. Zero, zilch, nada, nothing happened since I blew the fuse. So now it was time to open up the main compartment to see how much fun it was going to be to replace the fuse. I have had other booster packs where they actually have the fuse, blade fuse, located on the outside of the unit. But this one had one on the inside and was pretty much going to have to be replaced with a proper fuse holder just in case it blows again. Bulb style fuse holder. Sure, I could just copy the way they have it, but to me, I was thinking more of a long term. If it blows again for any reason, I would be able to quickly remove the side and swap the fuse. Instead of undoing the battery, pulling the battery, rerouting wires, cutting zap straps, pulling boards, and losing springs, still need to find that. As you can tell, it's sounding like I'm still working on it while I am writing this. Well, that is because I am. I thought I would document this far and finish up with the fuse replacement and see how things went. Now, I was happy I blew the fuse. It actually gave me a great opportunity to play with my benchtop Micronta multimeter, my baby, which I finally got cables for. They seem to be odd sized plugs. So it seems there wasn't a spring as stated before, which I was missing. When I flipped the one cover over to see if I could get a better view on the housing to view the fuse holder connections to the main board, the buttons fell out. Even when I went to desolder, I ended up desoldering the LED light on it thinking it was the right one, but made a mistake and had to go one over, which is fine. Finally, got everything soldered up and the new fuse holder in. No thanks to my soldering iron that seems like now after many years has decided it was time to break, 
on me, good thing for backup parts. So we'll have to get that done at a later time as I really enjoy my soldering station. So now I needed a 15 amp fuse for the holder. I have tons of fuses. Do you think I had one? Nope. So 10 amp fuse it is for testing the compressor. I will have to order some 15 amp ones and get that replaced. So after getting it all back up and together, I was looking inside the case to see how much room I had in areas. I think there might be a spot I can put a fuse holder on the outside, but for now undoing the 10 to 14 screws is okay with me now that it has the fuse holder in it instead of just the fuse with the leads on it. Kind of silly how many people would toss this out if it blew a fuse. Below is my video on me taking it apart and testing was a great time and was actually glad I blew a fuse, not on purpose. Now to see if I can find more of those compressor pumps.